Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome today to another uh, video for the 2020 election. I want to talk about this poll right here. Uh, well, this poll right here that was conducted by uh, how who is the actual pollster that Fox uses? Um, but it's a reputable poll, and the numbers look reasonable I think um, for what you would expect and we'll get to the map in just a minute here but it's kind of a little bit weird these cross tabs and I love it when polls include full cross tabs because it absolutely makes a difference because it allows you to see whether the top line results make any sense or not and what is it uh, in generally speaking I think it's just a little strange to see Biden up by five um, when you also have Hispanics at 41 percent for Donald Trump that's almost a popular vote it, because if we remember, this would be the highest for a Republican since Bush in 2004. Um, be the highest in a very, very, very long time. And if you break down whites by whether or not they have a college degree or no college degree, uh, very similar levels of support for Donald Trump. The only white group that doesn't favor Trump is women with a college degree. Um, which is a little bit surprising. Um, actually, another surprising one is that Trump is at 42% in urban areas, um, but the only area he's winning is uh, rural areas. And, of course, the battleground states weirdly are even to the national result effectively, um, which is kind of defying common wisdom that uh, the battleground states uh, in this current map tend to be more Republican leaning. Now, if we remember back to Bush in 2004, let's go ahead and fill in the states that he won in 2004. And he won Iowa flipping Iowa uh, for New Hampshire, which was still a net gain of electoral votes. Um, now, obviously, this would be a massive win. But here's the thing. You look at this map and you think, okay, well, let's talk about states that have high, poor, high numbers of Hispanic voters. And by the way, I'm going to get to something kind of important when it comes to that and you could make the argument for Virginia and Georgia and maybe some other states but predominantly Hispanic voters are in the Southwest Texas and Florida this is where Hispanic voters matter now what really matters is the fact that Arizona Nevada Colorado and Florida, those are all battleground states. New Mexico really isn't. But it could potentially be. So if we just take off all the states that aren't battlegrounds, Democrats are going to argue that Texas is a battleground. I, I'll, I'll allow them, okay? Also, Virginia has now actually gone Democratic. But let's assume that this is a map. By the way, Trump can still win if he were to win these states. Yeah, that's actually a map where Trump could win. But, but let's look at them. If Trump really is at 41% with Hispanics nationally and maintains his, major, uh, his margins with white voters, in, say, Colorado, I don't think Colorado is entirely possible and that would give the win to Democrats 
Um, Texas won't even be close. Florida certainly won't be close. Arizona probably going to Trump. And Nevada, I would actually argue, could definitely go to Trump. And if nationally he's up with white voters, especially whites without a college degree, why, and up the margins he is with whites without a college degree, why are states with almost majorities of that one demographic, and of course he is also up with whites with a college degree, so basically he's up with all whites, why are states that are 80 to 90% white in terms of their electorate not in his column because he has outright majorities with those groups and this is what I've been saying when I say that the cross tabs are not making sense with the top line results that are being released And I also did some reading. Um, these are states, uh, I'm going to highlight states where uh, that candidates have reserved ad buys or have bought ads in. If I remember correctly. Now, this is a very expansive map. A very expansive map much more expansive than I think we've seen in a very long time now obviously this indicates that because Biden is spending money in Texas he thinks the map could be competitive there and by the way this would be hilarious if after the election this happened it won't but it would be hilarious to see um, <laughs> but obviously it indicates that Biden thinks there could be a very large landslide possible 400, you know, 400 electoral votes but we also have to remember guess where the Trump campaign is spending if he wins all the states he should He's spending Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Virginia. I don't think he's going to win Virginia, by the way. Uh, New Hampshire and Maine. Trump could also get a very large map. And if he all of a sudden sees reason to believe he could win Colorado, for example, high amounts of Hispanic support, he could go there. Now that said, we do need to specify that the Hispanic voting group isn't a voting group per se. More accurately, um, it's much more accurate to describe the Hispanic voting bloc as very diverse in terms of where of nation of origin, and that determines a lot of their political leanings. For example, uh, Cubanos in Florida. Cuban voters, the, the majority of them are either first, second, or even third generation and left after Castro's rise to power. And they tend to be much more uh, Republican leaning as a whole. And there is some recent polling out that when they asked Venezuelan voters that their support was also behind Donald Trump. And that seems to indicate that they are also a more right-leaning group than, say, Mexican voters, Mexican-American voters in the desert southwest. And I don't like to stretch into anecdotal evidence too often, but sometimes you can learn a lot from anecdotal evidence, especially if it's repeated in more than one area from more than one person. 
a lot of Venezuelan voter, uh, a lot of Venezuelans that I've spoken with, while they may not like Trump at all, really, they really don't like the what the Democratic Party is talking about, and a lot of the stuff that they are hearing, especially from the farther left wings of the Democratic Party, to them, it sounds like the same vague promises that Chavez and Maduro were making. Now, take that for whatever reason, but it makes some level of sense that if they saw those types of promises lead to what they got in Venezuela, it would stand to reason that if they heard those same promises again, they're not going to buy it. But that is, again, anecdotal evidence. But if Trump really is at, you know, over 40%, I don't actually see a reasonable path for Biden to win. I could honestly see Trump winning Colorado if he's above 40% with Hispanics. And that would, as a start, put Trump at 235 I would say Biden would probably still carry New Mexico just because of the shift in uh, certain certain other, uh, just the fact that New Mexico tends to be a little more Democratic leaning as a whole, basically. And with his still majority support among whites in general, and it's a clear majority, I wouldn't be shocked to see him win Iowa and Ohio. And then you have to look at, okay, where does Trump get that extra 11 votes? Well, again, if he's up with whites in general, just a majority of whites in general, I don't, I'm not going to go there, but there's one of them. And then he just needs 10. He just would need 10. North Carolina. That would do it. Wisconsin would do it. Minnesota would do it. Uh, Michigan would do it. Basically, any state would do it other than New Hampshire. Now, I don't think it's reasonable to say that Trump is actually going to get that amount. Especially in probably not winning those states. But his map is still relatively the same as it was in 2016. And he banked on it. Now, we do also have to bring in the fact that white voters as a whole are not the same across the nation. And that there is a lot more uh, polarization in these battleground states, in these traditional battleground states like uh, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Minnesota. Though um, calling Minnesota a traditional, traditional battleground is a touch of a stretch. But if those numbers were applied just in general, uh, I don't see it as a good thing for the Biden campaign, and if Trump really is even above 35% with Hispanics, which is entirely possible, and actually, given the fact that most polls that I've seen have Trump between 23 and 25% with non-white voters, indicates that, yeah, he probably is actually at 35% or above with Hispanics. Um depending on how much credit you give him for his African-American outreach, okay? That is the major caveat. Um, I would venture to say that if Trump really is at that level, he should be winning this election, especially...
considering that most polls indicate that he is still strong with white voters. And that is what I am going to say is dealing with the preponderance of data. Anyway, uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Likes, comments, subscriptions, they truly do help and I greatly appreciate them. Especially thank y'all, every single one of you for putting me over 500 subscribers. I greatly appreciate that. Um, we reached that slight, uh, not too long after I uh, ended the live stream on Saturday. Um, so I greatly appreciate that. Um, links to my presidential model as well as the as well as my uh, Patreon, which I would greatly appreciate a donation or two there, um, <laughs> are in the description. And uh, have a very nice day, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye-bye.